Hi, it's Mark again with Exotic Car Play Place, and what do we have here today? We have a new little toy from Volkswagen. What is this? Well, this is the Golf R. And in case you guys didn't know what the Golf R is, this is no regular Golf. This is a Golf R that happens to have a turbocharged four-cylinder engine that pumps out a massive 294 horsepower and about 280 foot-pounds of torque, which doesn't sound that breathtaking, but in a small Golf like this that weighs virtually as much as a half box of Kleenex, that is a spectacular amount of horsepower. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about some of the things and the features in the Golf R here today. Now, some of the stuff that is also unique to the R. Now, up until this time, North America was not exposed to an all-wheel drive Golf. You could only get all-wheel drive in Europe at different times. In basically North America, Canada, United States, you could not get the Golf in an all-wheel drive because that was infringing on Audi's territory. Audi was the, the car maker that was creating the all-wheel drive cars. They were creating that price point so consumers would be more interested in looking at the Audis if they wanted all-wheel drive, if they wanted sunroofs, and if they wanted some of those things. Well, Volkswagen has now stepped over that line. So let's talk about some features of this Golf R. Well, you know what? The all-wheel drive is the big one. The 300 horsepower is another big one. Those are the biggest the biggest pieces of the puzzle on this Golf R because I think that at the end of the day is why most Golf owners will buy this car is truly because of the performance that it brings to the table. You have all-wheel drive for all-weather driving conditions. You have multiple settings to dial in here that allows you to really customize your ride, your sound, your performance. And this car really does take Volkswagen's performance branding to a new level. This is really kind of infringing on the Audi S3's territory where, you know, it's effectively the same car, but of course at a fraction of the cost, this is quite a beautiful little car, packed full of features. Also, this happens to be um, have some nice variations in what your options can look like. Now it doesn't have a sunroof, that's a bummer, but it does some other things. In today's day and age where it's harder and harder to find a manual transmission, believe it or not, with 300 horsepower, you can still get this car fitted with a manual six-speed transmission, which fits very well and it actually is well suited to the performance of this car. Now that being said, the flip side is here. There are the majority of owners, I would say, are going to opt for the six-speed. Now, this is a 2017 Golf R. This one, actually, its brother would be equivalent to the uh, six-speed dual-clutch transmission. It would have the dual-clutch in this same model year. So that the 2018, which I'm not driving, has many other features that even the 17 doesn't have because it's a middle mid-year refresh and so what the 2018 now brings to the table is a double clutch transmission now with seven speed versus the six speed that's in the 2017 it also has a much much tastier looking dashboard more configurable as in you'd find typically in the Audi products today a lot like the Audi RS TT that I drove recently whoa That's what you're gonna find in the new Golf R for 2018. You're also gonna find different wheels, um, and there's a few other subtleties, but those are the big ones. So, it's a beautiful little car, and I gotta say the performance is quite very brisk, I guess would be the best way to put it. It's not mind-blowing, it's not, not gonna knock your socks off, but it's a very brisk little car. And so if you're looking for a car that's very quick, can perform very well and have that sure-footed handling like you get in an all-wheel drive system. This is your non-pretentious, high-performing, great all-wheel drive type of car that you can expect to drive and own and operate for many, many years to come. Typical for Volkswagen, I wouldn't expect to get anything less than a ton of mileage out of a car like this. Expect a long life and a lot of fun out of this car. 
So what are the things that are great about this car and what's not so great about this car? Well, I think, firstly, let's talk about the great things. And the great things to me are obviously the performance. I mean, with 300 horsepower, all-wheel drive, it's gonna handle like it's on rails. It's gonna accelerate like anything, you know, moderately sporty today. And, you know, it, the performance is an awesome, awesome deal with this car. I love it. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's enough to keep you entertained, but without breaking the bank, you know? Um, Another thing that's great about it, well, look at the shiny paint on this. I know it sounds like a simpleton. I'm a simple, simple man with simple needs, right? Well, I think, you know what, it's, again, it's understated, but they, they splash some really nice paint job schemes on this car and make them very attractive without looking overdone, you know, and the cars in general are very well styled, like it's a beautiful thing. So I would say overall the styling is consistent with the Golf and the Volkswagen brand. But, you know, it's tweaked. It's got the little subtleties. It's got that nice trim around the exhaust tips. It's got the, the nicely done uh, paintwork. And the style is, again, it's very nice. Updated headlights and all that. And the third thing, well, again, I, I got to comment honestly with these cars is the interior finish. This is very consistent with the Audi brand stuff. And, you know, if you watched my video with the Audi TT RS, the other, well, previous that I had done, You'll know that I was very impressed with the quality of it. interior materials were spectacular on it. And this is kind of a dumbed down version of it, but the, the materials and the quality of them are very well finished. And it, it's, it's it's very, very well put together, consistent with everything that, that seems to come out of you know Germany these days. So the interior is a great, great, a beautiful place to be. It's it's really almost like an oasis. It's quiet in here. It's well put together. It's sturdy. And the touch, you know, the materials, the touch are, are nice, well made. It's not overly done in terms of the styling, but it's, it's very well put together. And it's a beautiful car that way. So what are the things I don't like about it? Well, what I don't like about it, you know what? I, I know there's more powerful versions, even though 300 horsepower is a lot. I know I've understood that there is possibly a 400 horsepower version lingering in the wings. Um, I think that will be exciting. So for me, knowing that there's always a more powerful option is always a little bit, kind of kills it for me a little bit. But again, that being said, this is not a slouch. This car goes, it's nice, it's fast. Another thing that I don't really like all that much, again, you know, here we are, I'm in a 2017, again, knowing for sure that the next model year, the refresh in 2018, you've got the updated dashboard, you've got the um, extra gearing and the DCT. There's some upgrades that are coming mid-year. So, you know, that, that kind of, again, kind of kills it for me. Buying a 2017 isn't bad, um, as long as there's a discount associated with that. But the 20 is, 2018 is actually substantially upgraded. And you know what, the third thing that I really don't, um, I don't like that much and you know what I don't think it's all that bad but I think again it's it's a matter of reputation and the Volkswagens unfortunately have a bit of a reputation around their diesel engines and you know what the beautiful thing here is that you know this isn't the diesel engine we've got the gas jobby and it's not quite susceptible to the same uh, rhetoric and the same uh, nonsense that seems to come from some of the critics but at the end of the day, it does. I mean, it's still affiliated. It's a Volkswagen, and unfortunately, they had a bit of a bad rap there a couple of years back with the diesel uh, issues that they had in the emissions. So, you know, driving a Volkswagen, some people are going to kind of say, well, you know what? You're not doing the right thing by supporting that company. I've heard people already comment about that. From where I'm standing, objectively speaking, I would say that's not a concern, but not, especially not in the gas jobbies. But, you know, again, it's the reputation. And for me, that, that kind of hurts a little bit. You know, you're gonna have people that are always gonna kind of look down through their schnozzes at you on that, so. But again, I hope everybody, you like this video. It's short, it's sweet, to the point. Give you a quick summary of what this car is all about. It was a great little drive. This car is a lot of fun, to, and it's quite the hoot, actually. So, I hope you enjoyed it. If I can recommend this car, I certainly will. And let's just call that official. I recommend this car for somebody that doesn't want to break the bank, but still wants to have a lot of fun and wants to enjoy some spirited driving. And you know, not you know, not necessarily stand out. You know what? This car does sort of blend in a little bit, and that's that's not a bad thing. People want to be a little understated sometimes, and that that's that's a good thing. I mean, you can roll under the you know under the radar a little bit with this. So again, everybody, I hope you like. Please subscribe. Come back soon. We'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.